pieces in for us all to trip over and do whatever. But at the end of the day, we haven't worked out what we do with what's left. And it might, it might provide jobs, but it also sadly provides jobs for the people at the National Health Service who will have to look after the people who are ill as a result. Thanks, Christina. Rob? Thanks, Chair. Um, for as much as I share your concerns, Christina, you know, around the, the nuclear industry, this is um, an industry of the future and it's something that we don't want to be left behind to consider the figures that we've just had here about, you know, being ahead of it, the last five to twenty one percent of people being employed in that. I think we should be supporting this. Um, I'm sure if you have somebody from the Green Party who be giving an office of things that are there today. And yeah. Glad to support this motion, Stephen. Adam and then Jay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think it's important to note, although I, I share Christine's concerns about the disposable nuclear waste material, it is a cleaner energy source than fossil fuels, and it's also a more secure source of energy than fossil fuels moving to the future. So we can't afford to ignore it as part of the energy mix. So we can always still include uh, manufacturing industries in the green energy sector, which we're also looking at, it's all part of the mix. I think and that's important to, to remember. Thanks, Adam. Jenny? Well, I fully understand Christina's point of view, but a lot of these jobs will be in research and development, which are part of that is to actually find ways of making these industries safer. So I think she can rest assured that if this development as per motion goes ahead, have lots more research, lots more development, and a much safer industry. So I would like to support the motion. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Also, I'd just like to make a very quick comment, only a quick one. Um, it's, it's a well developed motion, Steve, thank you. But my, my politics evolved um, through CMD. So I'll, um, I'll stick with Christine. I think we'll, we'll move. Um, <laughs> we'll, nobody else would like to speak. Yes, yes, yes. Just one, one issue. Yeah, I don't know if you've got about this. I mean, this, look at the solar industry. I'm afraid, you know, our, you know, our party, you know, the Conservative Party, as I'll say, is I'm not so, but I'm not really very frank around these the solar industry. So can we, we move to endorse Steve Motion? All those in favour? Sorry, she asked if we could. We can't hear it. She wants it. Is it a microphone she can put on? So it's just she did ask. So.
we got to this position, you've journeyed so far, so you'll be aware that there's been sort of protracted negotiations and discussions in, in recent months. Um, and in the budget earlier this year, the Chancellor confirmed a willingness to develop the deal. And I know there's sort of was fairly progressive activity to work on what that deal might look like. Um, and the city region submitted our proposals to, as part of the CSR on the 4th of September. I think it's fair to say since then that there was very detailed ongoing negotiations to actually work up the detail of what the ask might look like and what we actually really wanted it as a city region. And then there were a number of meetings with, with various officials to kind of firm that up. And all of that culminated following those um, months of negotiation with a draft deal being agreed by government on the 17th of November. And then, as you're aware, that's formally agreed by the council on the 19th, alongside all of the other five councils across the city region, and agreed at the meeting with the combined budget on the 20th of November. So, we've got a deal now on what's that actually mean. This deal is phase one of the deviation deal. The government are very clear that actually there will be two sort of phases to this. Phase one is agreed um, earlier this month. The phase two discussions are actually starting right now. Phase one focuses primarily on economic development, including skills, housing, planning, and transport. And phase two discussions will look at the wider issues in terms of uh, health, social care, police, fire, and rescue services. So, what's the deal then? What does it consist of? So, as I said, firstly, economic development. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, the deal also confirms an additional six, uh, 900 million pounds over 30 years specifically to fund economic growth and development across the city region to trigger the private sector and industrial community. Um, it covers transport, housing planning and employment skills. In terms of economic development, it acknowledges the significance really of the port and the river as a, as a key sort of driver for economic growth, particularly in terms of potential on tidal energy and tidal power. Um, it also acknowledges the significance of culture offer across the city region um, in terms of the key growth sector. In terms of transport, it would be a really multi-year sector which gives us some um, reassurances around the sector, funding for transport, including highways. Long term security and then there's rail electric, so funding for future stock. How to refranchise bus services and particularly to support the delivery of smart and to activities so that will help us deliver some of our more coordinated approach to sort of transport across the city region. The deal will acknowledge that further discussion needs to be had around the whole issue of two times, but committed to our views around what our detail might be. Okay, so in terms of housing and planning, um, I guess that one of the most significant parts of the deal was uh, committed to a single statutory city plan for the city region to look at strategic employment and housing sites. Um, Developing corporations with the specific narrow development zones to develop economic growth. Uh, Aligned commission and joint assets board, which would be looking at sort of the public sector assets, the, the assets that used to be made owned by the regional development agency and, and a number of other bodies to look at how we can better coordinate and manage that really to increase size and availability for employment and housing in particular. Um, and further discussion again around housing loans and particularly around strategic housing priorities across the city region. Okay, another key area in phase one was around employment skills. There's a number of elements to this. So firstly, it would be a commitment to look at post-16 and post-19 skills, capacity, resources uh, and requirements across the patch. Um, Commitment to work much more collaboratively around careers advice to make sure that we really joined in approaches of careers advice, particularly to make sure we all people are made aware of some of the big opportunities being further down the line in terms of growth sectors. And then a whole bunch of activity around DGP as a broader technical employment to support people like into work. Much more collaboration and control and influence of how we can work with DGP. In particular, the um, commitment was to develop a pilot to look at tackling unemployment in terms of our whole household approach. And that would be um, particularly helpful, I think, in terms of some of the women's activity around our children's families and our health related work as this approach. So we've got to do And again, further commitment to discussions around how we can be better improving the to way education systems and employment for the people in the society. Okay, so you obviously be aware of the terms of phase one of the deal, the commitments to make in terms of governments that we'd have to have in the act of the And the timescales at the moment are that that will be from May 2017. I think some internal discussions in the short term about whether we might have some internal arrangements, but all of that detail is still to be worked up. There's a number of principles that we want to flag up 
those kinds of more scrutinous arrangements. Uh, firstly, legislation will be required to set out the details of how the elected mayor might work. Um, there will be sort of delegation and inclusive arrangements, so we will feel that sex authorities will still be involved in the decision making. There will be checks and, checks and balances, so the vast majority um, of the situation the mayor will be to either a unanimous or a two thirds majority support. And I think there's a principle built in there about maintaining local authority sovereignty. But this isn't about sort of taking powers from the local authority level to the city region, but it's central and down to the city region. And there'll be details from that to particular on scrutiny, which I guess would be particularly interesting uh, in terms of how the decision making will be scrutinised for transparency. Uh, and I guess the detail really of how that works is largely down to us. It is to be worked with, but there are some principles there that we need to embed as we go forward. Okay, so just to flag up some of the potential positives and other implications, I suppose. So it is a significant achievement that we've secured that investment fund, as I said, 30 million pounds over the next 30 years. And moving in the position of all the projects will benefit from that and help us to deliver our priorities, particularly around growth and housing and income transport. Um, it gives us more direct control and influence over areas that are arguably very important to us as a borough in terms of our borough plan and our 2020 pledges, particularly around skills, employment, business support, so European funding, um, and I think in terms of delivering our plan and our 2020 Arguably, it gives us a more realistic prospect of influence in the whole debate around the human trials. And it commits the rules for further discussion around housing, as I said, education, particularly tied to how recognising the significance of the river and the ports. And as I said earlier, in terms of phase two, we will commit to looking at those other areas really in that like detail, and those discussions are starting now, really. So that's a brief whiz through of where we are so far. I think in the coming weeks and months we will really see that detail in terms of governance, what that all might look like. Capacity to deliver, so have we got capacity and capability to actually deliver what we asked for now, and that will need to be worked with. And critically, kind of the implementation we do, and that's started now, because some of this work has to start now, if we're going to deliver for next year, and to be not trying to say to you. And as I said, um, Discussions around phase two are starting now as well in terms of what that might look like, and I think it would be critical to our stakeholder involvement in the right discussions with our, with our partners and our students in our now. And as I said, the detail around what the mayor or model might look like over the next year is really of May 2017, but still a debate and discussion to be had about whether we can give some kind of interim arrangements between now and now. That's me, I think, for this group. Yes, Chair, the mayor got two. The first one is quite simple. What will the checks and balances be? I agree with you, but there's no response to the council, which is like throw out the hand of the mayor, even if it's not looking at the way uh, the mayor process should be reviewed. I'd like to know a bit more on that particular point. And the second part in uh, the uh, taken back into control of the buses. We know that in Newcastle this was locked into and they were given the opportunity to have the elected mayor. They found it was, was not cost effective because the amount of funds there to pay back to the private sector uh, in relation to that. So will it be an actual viable ask and promise? Thank you. Yeah. Um, in terms of checks and balances, as I said, a lot of these tasks have to be worked up, but what we did have written in as part of the deal was some of the areas where there would be a need for a unanimous vote to support the mayor or two thirds. So for some of the big areas, the really significant areas, like anything to do with the constitution or single spatial framework, um, or the key route network that sort of transport asks, no, we need uh, unanimous support from the other areas. Um, and in terms of some of the other areas where we need maybe two thirds majority, everything to do with budgets and strategies, and some of those bigger issues that would affect all six local authorities, and there would need a two thirds majority support to carry things like that through. So, there are a headline idea with the kind of checks and balances that are already in built, but I think the further detail about 
how it actually work and who will lead on each of the portfolio of themes as they're developed. Still to be worked on. Second one. Yeah, for you, Chair, just, uh, just a few words on the buses. So, uh, I think uh, as members will have picked up, we've got, uh, we've got some board principles there in terms of that way to control over the local bus franchising. I think there's still a long way to go with this. So, I think that, that phrase, the devil is in the detail, is, is commonly used and very pertinent here. Uh, I think the one thing that we can say at this stage is that uh, we do know that. Um, well, there should be a report going to uh, Emergency Travel Committee shortly from uh, Emergency Travel Officers where they're starting those initial steps of looking at what they call the bus lines and actually starting to do some of the groundwork with some of the major operators uh, across the Emergency Side, uh, really with that aim to you know, drive up uh, you know, the, the bus, uh, you know, bus is that really serious form of public transport that people want to use get back to these levels and things like that. So it's just an agenda that we're going to keep a very close eye on over the next few months. Right, would you like to answer the part I asked about the cost? Yes. No. I think I'll give you the detail of it, Jeff.
dealing with issues like that and making some very sound recommendations here to the committee uh, and then to the cabinet member. Having said that, um, there's been quite a lot of business that way, um, but there have been a whole series of occasions whereby we've only had, say, one or two objections to a particular proposal, and it will be occasions where all the board members are actually in support of what we're doing. But even in situations like this, it's still been necessary to actually take this business to the panel and then through the committee in that kind of a way. There's been quite a few items of that nature, and it's fair to say that it has chair, caused us some issues sometimes around the delivery of our capital programmes and actually sometimes getting money spent and getting these things delivered on the ground. So, for this reason, what this report is proposing is that, uh, I think if I can just refer to sections 3, 2, and 3, 3 in the report, what we're proposing is that in situations where um, unless there is a petition of more than 25 signatories or unless we get 15 or more individual objections or clearly if any local board member has an issue with a particular proposal if any of those criteria met then we would follow the usual system of reports going to panel committee for the cabinet member However, if a, an item doesn't meet any of those thresholds, the idea then would be that myself in conjunction with the cabinet member would have the authority to actually make decisions around traffic regulation orders of this nature. And I think really just to provide reassurance here, so wherever we have a scheme or project, a TRO relating to anything that's going to be contentious, and gets a significant amount of public interest and representations, or if one of the more board members isn't happy, you know, in any of those situations, the proposal would come to the panel and then here, but it would only be in those really non contentious situations. Uh, and I think finally, Chair, just in terms of process, we're obviously bringing this report here to you today, uh, and I've also taken this report to the Constitutional Oversight Committee uh, about a week ago, uh, and um, uh, from that committee um, we had some helpful feedback on the night. Largely I think the committee were support in support of this proposal, though we did get some very helpful feedback from <coughs> members of the committee around just strengthening up the timing in here, particularly the importance of the role of the board members in particular, and we would be looking at reflecting some of that constitutional oversight committee feedback uh, in, in this process before we ought to take it further. Happy to take any questions. Um, yeah. I'll take Christina, then John, then Steve, and then David. Councillors are often training on 
the uh, valid traffic management reasons for objecting to something. Because all information is useful and all training is useful, and we'd all go to useful training. Thank you. Thank you. Just, uh, just, just a few points on that. So, um, important in relation to the role of board members. So, in, in terms of the process, um, so, so this will be about schemes and proposals that the council, the council officers, yes. are promoting. Yes. Um, if this process is working right, in terms of how we engage with board members, when we advertise the proposal, board members should get notification of the proposed scheme at the very start of the process. Should all board? Uh, I, 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 assume, I assume, Chair, that is a core part of our process, as a man of standing here, that comes on every occasion that we progress something like this. Right. Can I just come back and misunderstood what I've said? We do get it, but it's not sent directly to the board members. Like planning says <coughs> this, what's it called, Lacroix or something alert. And we know that it's our board, we read it with interest. When you get a huge thing which has words not in any kind of order, doesn't start with B and then with whatever the lowest is. They're all over the place and we've got to hunt through. Sometimes we are only human, we might miss something. I'll just, just work it through, but I think, uh, I think what I'm about to say might address council yeah, class concerns. So, in terms of how we, we engage board members in the process, so we do at the start of the adver advertisement process in that way. At the end of the advertisement process, and we get those objections and representations, we then ought to be writing a report uh, in the usual way, and uh, that would uh, that would normally go to board members at that stage. Now, when we raise this at the Constitutional Oversight Committee, we outline that process. However, uh, members of the committee highlighted and said, "Well, that's fine, but as a safeguard, can we put something in place where officers have to explicitly make sure that they have engaged with the party spokespersons and the ward members to check that they're happy to deal with something in this particular way?" So, I think there's two learning points for us. The first is that we'll work hard to make sure that when we're planning to do something an advertising proposal, we'll look at how we're providing that information to board members and I'll take that away. And secondly, when we recommend uh, an amendment such as this, if, if members are in support of this, we will be proposing to, to tie board members into this process <coughs> so that as officers we need something from them that has an audit trail that they've been happy to move this through delegation in the way we've described. Just a second bit then, so in terms of the legalities of some of this, so it is important to highlight that the one difference with planning is that very often the proposal will be a develop a proposal which uh, members will be forming a view on. The big difference here is that when we're consulting on something, it's something that's being promoted by the council as the highway and traffic authority. So, uh, you know, by, by definition, you know, it should be, uh, this should be a legal proposal in that sense. Uh, so this will be a, a scheme that, uh, if we're proposing to do it, then uh, it, it, should, it should be lawful. Um, however, uh, if we can provide training to members around that role of the panel, uh, then you know, I'm, I'm sure we can do that. So, I wasn't saying about it being unlawful, I was saying you have said that you've got to make your objections on include valid traffic management reasons. So, I think you need to be able to tell us what uh, you consider to be valid traffic management reasons. Chairman, if I may, um, obviously the, the report was considered early, uh, last week at the Standard Constitutional Oversight Committee, um, and the minutes of that particular article have been circulated. Um, as with this meeting, um, members raised the issue about um, consultation with new members, and it was a, there was a specific member move that has been incorporated in the paper that's going to council uh, on the 14th. Um, one of the amendments was to remove uh, 
the clarification or the specification about um, um, 3.2, 25 or more signatures from individual households. Uh, and second amendment uh, was 3.3 uh, to remove the words traffic management. So valid traffic management reasons. Because there are more reasons obviously that, that can be incorporated or, or incidental to an objection. Um, I think training was mentioned um, and is, is, is vital you know, to, to work in the process. Um, but those issues were, have already been uh, taken up, incorporated, minuted and will be part of the report when members take it at the council. Sorry, can I just come back and say, if that's the case, why are we discussing something? I'm sorry, I'm, I was distracted the other day, so I haven't had time to read anybody else's papers on this. Why, why are we not given the sort of conversion? Why are we not given the That's what doesn't give you time to read it. And it then wasn't flagged up by Mark, which is what worried me. Uh, obviously, the, the timing of preparation for this agenda and the status of the Constitutional Oversight Committee uh, papers were distributed to members uh, uh, roughly about the same time. Um, obviously, the meeting has to have the first meeting has taken place. We're trying to get the information to you as, as quickly as we possibly can. Um, in terms of. Uh, sorry, that, that was, uh, it was John. <coughs> yes, I, I think uh, Christina's push was well made. Um, I was on it for a time so we couldn't take part in that discussion. All I want to say is that it seems to me that every council, not just members of this committee, would be interested in this amendment change uh, because we all have this problem in our wars. Uh, and I've served on that panel for a term. Um, they're very diverse. What I think the, um, the system must incorporate is A, um, that the ward councillors are notified in good time with a date proposed to a program for submitting any news that they've got. Um, uh, clearly, which you get on the phone as well. Certainly, I would like it to be in larger print than we get on what's going on with road uh, repairs, etc. I really think they're investing another two hundred pounds in glasses for really, the time read them. And I just don't understand how objective it is before. Why it becomes that important. And also I can't again see why it should be in uh, going in, in terms of war uh, war clearly identifying wars in which this change is going to take place. In other words, now that would be informative and council would uh, get that. And I think that's what we need, because it's my experience, and maybe that of other councils as well, that <clears throat> for a variety of reasons, um, the public don't always pick up on what's being proposed. Uh, sometimes uh, they have in um, uh, terms which perhaps they don't understand, and uh, since I don't understand, sometimes I don't think about it. Um, uh, so I think it's important that councils do get it in good time where they think that there may be a problem, they do have a chance to discuss it with residents uh, and uh, put in their views, uh, even if, in the end, it goes to the officers and the um, cabinet member. Because that means you will be getting a little representation before making the decision. But I think every councillor should be receiving the detail of their development and how it will be managed. Thanks. These, these are really good points so far, Christine and John. Steve, just before I come to you, if I may, um, our cabinet member sitting at the back, Stuart, would like to just say something briefly, I think. Stuart? Thank you. Thank you. schemes with a, a PDF file with a plan 
details of the and details of that sort of objection and, and the date. I think members are getting mixed up with the, the weekly bulletin that gets sent out by Carl Amos, which is listed in all the road bits and standing across the borough. Okay, yeah, that, 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 I, I appreciate that. But that, that's separate to the notification set out as far as I'm aware. Well, do go out and it's all members when they went to the scheme and be able to place more votes. Thanks for that clarification, Stuart. Um, Steve? Yeah, thanks, Stuart. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are going to comment on this side by the members. Um, having been only with this, this panel for the last three years as, as chair, I, think I, I, I do appreciate this because, uh, as the chair knows, it's impossible to sit with us on. We, we are getting a lot where there's just you know, 55 in the uh, state can agree to it, one person doesn't. So I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, and I've seen the, I've only got this one tonight, this is the one probably Christine Hansen, the amendments of the scheme of allocation. The only one thing that seems to be missed out there, um, oh sorry, uh, not missed out, but something that the uh, standards committee said. 3-2, the third line is a consultant, in consultation with the cabinet member for highways. I think in there, and we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah, to the council.